okay I've got the roller bumps installed and they they were not really hard but it's hot outside today and all that but anyhow the roller bumps created a problem I never really anticipated and the problem is this these things roll so easily that the question of unhooking your winch and backing your motor down everybody you kind of get tired of people telling you hey you know uh, this might happen uh, if you you know your boat may slide off your bunks if you unhook it and all that well I'm here to tell you that might is on a chicken's butt I guarantee you you unhook your winch and start to back down a ramp your boats gonna beat you to the bottom it's not might will it happen it's gonna happen so here's the problem uh, I didn't anticipate it was gonna be this easy but what happens uh, I don't have many ramps uh, I don't put in ramps very often what makes my boat hard to unload so when you watch this video you make sure that you watch the video all the way through because putting these roller bunks on uh, would create some problems you didn't think about such as uh, it's so easy you back down a ramp and the next thing you know is you can't release your winch even once you're ready in to launch it in the water because the boat's pulling so hard you there's no way to do it uh, so the answer to this is what's called a bank robber's knot and I'll show you how to tie a bank robber's knot and what we're gonna do is put it on a uh, bow line and then release the winch and unhook it and the boat will launch itself believe me it'll get on it'll get in the water before you can even know it so I'm gonna show you how to do a bow line and a bank robber's knot uh, I wish that I had had somebody to video when I launched my boat I had to launch it twice and then load it one of the problems I didn't expect was loading the boat. I have a tiller steer. Uh, no way would I trade right now. I'm, I'm perfectly happy with it. But I had to load my boat about four or five times before I could figure out how to get it to stay on the trailer long enough to hook the winch to it. And what that amounted to is I had to back it in the water a lot farther than what I expected and then I leave it in gear let it idling forward while I walk to the front and hook up the winch so tying the bow line with a bank robber's knot gives you just about the right amount of winch rope hanging to not only unload it but to load it as well so you run the boat up on the trailer and that's another problem uh, you're gonna be this thing is so easy to load I loaded my boat both times without the bunks being in the water at all and I still had it slide off till I figured out how to uh, leave it in gear and let it idle while I walk up and hook up the winch line so please watch this video all the way through and let me show you how to tie that bank robber's knot uh, and I'll show you how I install these roller bunks the project was well worth it because I launched my boat by myself most of the time and uh, this will allow you to do it really easy and it's much easier to load as well you know before uh, 
I had to really give it a lot of gas to get it up there and then still sometimes I had to winch it up but these roller bunks they're the real thing they're like having ball bearings under it boy this thing rolls now so anyhow please watch the video all the way through thank you hello I decided I would make a short video here I just got through installing W.E. Smith uh, roller bunks for my mud boat and everybody's saying well you should have done gator glide and all of this well I did try that I took gator glide and uh, put it on my bunks and it just did not work for me it was not slippery at all and uh, the gator glide just I don't know it just didn't slide at all I don't know if my boat's heavy well I know it's heavy because it's uh, what 3 sixteenths or whatever the thickest they make them and uh, I really love my boat it's a stump jumper 1854 but it can be a bear to unload sometimes especially if the water's not very deep at a ramp so I wanted something just to slide in I've had knee surgery and I just can't hardly get it in by myself especially with these bunks so I did try the uh, gator glide and replacing the bunks I'll show you my gator glide uh, bunks here in a little bit and I haven't tried the W.E. Smith uh, roller bunks yet but uh, I do have them installed and they were not that easy to install uh, they come in four foot and five foot links um, my back cross member is five foot across and my front cross member is four foot across and the problem with that is I want to support my transom so I had to hang the back one off uh, you know four or five inches to uh, get right underneath the transom which made it where it wouldn't reach the front and even if it would have reached the front uh, then I wouldn't have been able to connect my front ones which I bought two sets of five foot uh, rollers had to do that because my bunks were 10 foot on each side and that's just, you know that run me a little over five hundred dollars plus the bolts and the stuff like that so I've got a little over five hundred dollars into it but anyhow I think it's gonna work great and I'll show you a little bit of my redneck engineering to make this work course I'm gonna paint this here in a minute but uh, it kind of leaving it black kind of helps you understand how I did it here so okay here we go okay here's the box uh, Smith roller bunks I think they're W.E. Smith something like that they come in five foot and four foot sections and I had to get two of them which run my price up quite a bit okay these things are designed to work on anything they have some swiveling mounts that'll make them work on all kinds of different trailers but my boat is a mud boat and I don't even have it here right now but it's got a flat bottom on it so these cross members is what I have to connect to and if you'll notice here uh, this five footer had to be a little bit hanging over because I want my transom fully supported and those roller bunks they kind of you know what is that a foot between them or something like that didn't even measure them but I want that transom with that big heavy motor right on them and of course I've got these things here I don't 
they're called boat buckles that holds it in place I know these rollers even uh, they don't roll from side to side but I know the boat will walk around a little bit more with them on but that's okay uh, here's my redneck ingenuity I got a 13 inch long piece of flat iron there and it's three-eighths of an inch thick and two inches wide and I just put it out from the cross member and bolted it you know where it couldn't walk around uh, the boat is heavy but most of the weight is back on the back and up front and notice it hangs over a little bit yeah, I probably might could have got by with a four-footer, but I want as much under that boat as possible. Most of these boats are ruined on the road. They ain't ro ruined out there in the, in the uh, lake. So, the other thing is that these rollers here are going to raise your... Uh, boat height from inch and a half to three inches so what used to be right here on the bunks now has gained an inch and a half so the boat's going to set up a little higher and you need to take that into account because you're going to have to set up the winch it's going to have to move around and uh, this thing needs to be fitted just right. This rope here is just a safety in case the winch breaks. That's all you need. But remember, this is going to have to move. And when you move this, that's going to have to move. So uh, if you do put roller bunks on, make sure that you've got a little adjustment uh, on your... Uh, winch up front this here is a two-speed winch i've had so much trouble I, I launch in some ungodly places and uh pulling it up i really have to pull on it pretty hard so i got a two-speed winch here got it off amazon don't even know who makes the thing anymore but it pulls it up there pretty good and it'll hold it so you know most of the weights right up front and then most of it's on the back of the transom and uh, this is a easy load trailer or something like that let me look see what kind of trailer this is it's got stump jumper engraved in it but they don't actually make their own trailers it's all aluminum easy track this is a easy track trailer and yeah you're looking at two different jacks on this thing because my land here slopes downhill i have to jack it up and then put another block under it and use the other jack and jack it up again to get the water to drain out but hopefully for long that might be remedied but anyhow easy track trailer uh that's standard under the stump jumpers i don't know if uh mike castle has got uh steel trailers now or not the only problem that i've had with this trailer is that i had to go and get mike castle to drill some holes in it because uh, when trying to load my boat sometimes it wanted to float off and what happens is you back your trailer in if you got a wind or any kind of waves you've got buoyancy from your tires and you got buoyancy from the, all this channel iron here and it'll actually float when you back this trailer in so he drill holes in the back in the front you have to drill them in the front to let the air out 
and uh, it no longer floats. And other than that, I've had no trouble at all with this trailer. Uh, and when I pull that mud boat, I've got a uh, 1854 stump jumper, and it's got a 40 horsepower gator tail engine on it. And uh, so far, the engine's been 100%. It's just just a little heavy. Runs about 26, 27 miles an hour with uh, two people, and uh, mine is heavier than most because I've got probably 10 or 15 rods and reels, and got a 50-pound tackle box in there, and another 20-pound odds and end box, and I got two batteries in it, so it is it is heavy. It's heavier than normal trailer, so. Oh, and I forgot to mention this. I've got the trick step here. Uh, this doesn't come standard. I bought that too. I had knee surgery and I couldn't get in my boat. So I needed a step with a handle. And uh, I can back the boat in and, and uh, somebody push me off. And then when I come in... All I got to do is snug it up and, and uh, step out on them steps. And that works pretty good. But trick step, this is a custom order. You have to tell them that you want something like this because normally they go on the post where the winch is. But they did good. It, it I like my, my steps there. So anyhow, we'll conclude this for right now. Uh, I may show you a picture or a video when I put my boat on, but uh, you can see the reason it's so muddy, I had to back this thing into my brother's stock tank, and it's been down there a couple days till I got time to do this, and I'm kind of anal. I can't let that go. I got to paint those uh, pieces of strap iron, so anyhow, uh, we appreciate you watching. Okay, I promised to show you my Gator Glide boards. I almost forgot about it. Uh, I had these bunks here on the back, no carpet, and I must have coated them with six coats of Gator Glide, and that Gator didn't glide all that good. It just didn't work for me. I don't know why I can't tell you looks a little rough that may be it I don't know but all I know is my boat wouldn't slide on these boards so that's why I went to the roller bunks okay I'm trying to document this as much as possible and uh, come up with something that I didn't think was going to be a problem. And uh, anyhow, the boat adjustment, if you'll notice that last roller is right underneath the transom there. That's exactly what I wanted. Last roller right underneath the transom. But still got a problem you know I knew I was probably gonna have to adjust my winch and all that because it sets up an inch and a half higher turns out that didn't seem to make any difference here but what did make a difference and to me has to be fixed is this right here You notice that I added those three eighths of an inch straps there. If they're only three eighths of an inch, and it raised the center part of these rollers up only three eighths of an inch. 
these aluminum trailers flex quite a bit I didn't figure that that would amount to anything but unfortunately if you'll notice the front of my rollers are not touching at all and the rear of my roller is not touching at all so that little bit three-eighths of an inch right there made enough hump in the middle that it's a problem so now all my weights right here in the center of my boat and the boat fit good everything looked good but I'm gonna have to add that 3 8 spacer to these other four uh, little uh, connection points right here and raise it up and it would probably work forever but it just worries me to death to think that it's not right so I gotta change that so as you notice this, this boat this is a heavy boat it's got a fishing deck up here a big Tarova uh, troll motor got a step in there because of my bad knee to be able to step up those extra little braces are for umbrellas for when we're crappie fishing and uh I've got these dry storage boxes here and top of that I've got storage for all my rods and reels here so all this adds weight but what really adds weight is this very thick sides here sides and bottom on this boat are really thick and uh, I wouldn't have it any other way I really wouldn't uh, I don't have to worry about tearing this thing up if I need to go over a stump only thing I got to worry about is how much of a running start I got to get if you notice that the uh, those boat buckles they fit perfect right there I did have a little trouble ro loading it last night because uh, it kept wanting to roll off before I could get it latched but I think these rollers are gonna be good so I'm gonna go unload this boat and then put spacers in it and see what happens after that 3 eighths of an inch spacer is added there okay here we are we're back uh, I have completed the installation of the spacers and look what a difference if you notice the rollers are touching all the way down and even in the back and it's not strapped down either uh, In case you're thinking that I pulled it down, no I didn't. It's, it's not strapped down at all. The straps are not on there. And uh, everything's touching. So that 3 8 of an inch made all the difference in the world. So, now we've got some other things here we're going to consider and I'll show you what they are here in just a second now I've told you how these rollers have changed things the way you do things now my boat is actually slanting now toward the winch so it's not going anywhere if you'll notice here we've got a safety strap and uh, you really need a safety strap don't just depend on your winch so you take and there's nothing fancy about that that safety strap there so here's what what we need to do 
when you get ready to launch your boat it's going to roll back and the next question is how do I take my winch strap off well you take a bow line everybody has a bow line you snap the bow line on there and then you tie what's called a bank robber's knot to do a bank robber's knot you fall you do a loop stand right here so they can see okay you take this loop you run it through like that then you take the tag in and you wrap it all the way around and I generally like to go twice just to make sure that I've got a full wrap and as you can see it tries to hang up on everything okay after you got a full wrap you see this little loop that you went around you pull it through that now all you got to do is pull it tight that bank robber's knot will hold a lot more than your bow line will okay you get ready to launch your boat you loosen up your on your winch and just loosen it up a little bit your boat's going to roll back because it's rollers. Nothing is keeping it from it. So then you step out here just like this. And you get ready. You back your boat. It's already partially in the water. And you just jerk that. And it comes loose. And you walk your boat down as it rolls into the water. Now one more time. How to tie a bank robber's knot. I'm here to tell you with these rollers, if you winch it down, you lose control of your winch, you just let it free fall, this thing is going to run wide open and as soon as your boat gets in the back, it's going to break your winch line. Then you're going to be in trouble. So use the bow line and use this bank robber's knot. One more time. You run a loop just like that. Then you make sure you go, I always go twice. And it works better if you're not standing on it at a time. You go around here twice. Now, you take your line and you run it back through this loop and then you pull it tight. Now, it's got a little slack in it and that's going to make up for letting your winch line loose. So, here's the deal. You're ready to launch and this is, of course, going to be tied to your trailer. You walk out by the side where nothing can get tangled up jerk that and it comes loose the boat rolls in the water this uh, bow line is hooked to your boat already you pull it back up to uh, the ramp or whatever and you're ready to go fishing but here's the deal it takes too long to unroll your winch all the way if you unroll the winch all the way and you lose control of it in neutral, then it's going to get to the end and it's going to break your winch line and tear something up. So don't do that. Use this bank robber's knot. And here's another thing. If you uh, try to do this, you know, this is what everybody does to a, a slip knot like this. 
Yeah, that looks easy. But when you jerk it, this is still attached. This is going to run through here just like this. It's going to try to hang up on you, try to hang up on the boat. It's just dangerous. Somebody's going to get hurt doing that. Make sure you use the bank robber's knot. All right, thanks for watching. Hopefully that helps. And uh, be careful.